So what is the Club of Rome, Rome's contribution or willingness to do to support all of us in this room who are investors and really wholeheartedly want to move capital toward a more sustainable Thank you, Marianne. World. Thank you, Klaus. Actually, Jürgen, you now see the only mistake that you made mm -hmm. uh, um, saying that I had anything to do with the Energiewende. It was all Klaus. Nevertheless, the rest of your talk was great. <laughs> um, so I was thinking perhaps to um, first say a few words about the Club of Rome. This one you, you know already, it's the limits to growth, and these are the uh, sort of ancestors of the um, Club of Rome. Uh, the, those are dead, and then we had a number of <laughs> fabulous people. In the meantime, Ricardo Diaz Hochleitner from Spain, Prince El Hassan from Jordania, and then for a long time, Ashok Kozla from India and Eberhard van Körber as co-presidents. Now we have Anders Wickmann, who isn't here, and uh, Graham Maxton as uh, Secretary General, and we are trying to sort of rejuvenate the club. Those are f just a few new members. Uh, when we came, Anders and I, uh, three years ago, the club was really very old, you know, <laughs> class. <laughs> uh, but now we are really systematically re rejuvenating, and we have a number of prominent people, including Alfred Ritter. Every German or nearly everybody in, in the world knows the chocolate, and uh, he's an enthusiastic about the work of the Club of Rome. And we have Nobel Prize winner Joseph Stiglitz and Matthias Wackernagel, the inventor in the sense of the uh, global footprints, and uh, Yoshi Hayashi from uh, Japan. I don't go into details. It just says a good mix of young people and prominent people to change the nature of the Club of Rome. But then, as you know, uh, this has been said by Jürgen and others, we had a tenfold increase of the world GDP after limits to growth, you know. So, people are not listening. And now, um, Johan Rockström, whom we also asked to be a member of the Club of Rome, has uh, painted this idea of the planetary boundaries, uh, showing that uh, we have already broken many of those. It's high time to really act on conserving what is there and uh, perhaps restoring what has, has been destroyed. Okay, uh, this is a new uh, report to the Club of Rome by Ugo Bardi uh, from Italy. Another one going even into religious question by David Cotton, the author of the book 20 years ago, ha uh, When Corporations Rule the World. And now he is saying the roots are deeper than that. So this is another element, uh, facet of the work of the Club of Rome. And the last report by... Uh, Claude Martin, he's a friend of uh, Jürgen, of course, from the, the Common Times at the WWF, uh, on the state and fate of the world's tropical forests. It was presented three months ago here in Berlin and uh, had a major um, publicity. Okay, and then somebody who has not been mentioned t today at all, in my view, is the most successful member of the Club of Rome, Gunther Pauli from Belgium, living in South Africa, speaking Japanese if necessary. Um, he has been uh, the founder of ZERI, Zero Emissions Research Initiative at the um, University of the United Nations. And he has created this term of the blue economy. The subtitle of the book is 10 Years, 100 Innovations, and 100 Million Jobs. He has now an update, 2015, in which he is documenting that something like 3 million jobs have already been created using this idea of cascading materials and energy through the systems, 
creating jobs, mostly in developing countries, and uh, it's very close to your philosophy, of course. Uh, Michael Brandgart is here, the hero of the cradle-to-cradle -cradle concept, and um, uh, they are kind of similar, and all that seems to be good for the economy, good for the environment, good for jobs, and uh, has been translated into 38 languages so far, and President Xi Jinping the other day said, I must know to, uh, get to know this Gunther Pauli. This is so important for China. And now they are, for instance, in China, they have built three factories, paper manufacturing from sand and plastic waste with no water. Isn't that great? So, uh, huge... Um, basket of inventions and I think worth of our all support including investment. Uh, and the Chinese anyway are very, very happy about the Club of Rome. We get also some support from them. This is a little a journal that, that they created recently uh, featuring Joe Stiglitz. And now a new project is, um, I initiated that, it's uh, still in an embryonic phase, um, a new report by the Club of Rome to more or less summarize what Jürgen has said, what the real challenges are, not only of poverty and uh, global warming, and things um, uh, Klaus has addressed, and uh, Sustainable World, maybe we have a, a better title later, um, the challenges including the self-contradictory nature of the Sustainable Development Goals that the UN are going to uh, adopt this month. And if all the social and economic SDGs are successfully implemented, the environment will be gone, you know? It means a quadrupling of the footprints. And already now, we have that overshoot day in, in August. And then it will be in January or so. Can you explain what that is for those who are not yeah, well, that deeply um, ingrained? It's the day from which on we are living from the substance. Until August, more or less, we have renewable resources available to us, but then we have exhausted that potential, and the rest is destroying what our grandchildren would deserve to get. You know? This is the overshoot day, according to Matthias Wackernagel. Okay. And this is accelerating rapidly if all the social and economic uh, sustainable development goals are met. Okay, and then uh, uh, other disasters, etc. And then, but it's not only the challenges. The main part is answers. The problematique and resolutique. This is a, a quote from an earlier report by the Club of Rome, the first global revolution and then certain philosophical questions of economics, technology revolution, the circular economy, of course, uh, and then the north-south equity. Uh, there is, for instance, the budget approach by the BBGU, the um, German uh, advisory board on global change. Now, I'm not going into details. What has it to do with um, uh, investment? Well, we think that by identifying the problems where you can lose a lot of money. We can help the investors' community not to. And one of the things, uh, evidently, is coal. I mean, uh, there's a new uh, little paper by Paul Gilding from Australia, from Australia, the coal-producing continent, um, showing that over five years or so, the Dow Jones rose by 70%, while the coal stocks plummeted by 75%. People have lost a huge amount of money by investing in the wrong thing. And uh, similar uh, events are going to happen, so the Club of Rome should be part of the investors' community, and so I'm very grateful allowing uh, me to speak here for a moment. Thank you. Thank you.